Hello guys, Sendo here again. So today I'm making a video that's gonna start a new series called Splatoon 2 Basics. And uh, basically what these videos will be, it will go through one concept and try, try to act as sort of a tutorial and tell you how you're gonna overcome each situation and uh, go over different concepts in Splatoon and uh, yeah, try to just overall improve you as a Splatoon 2 player. And uh, none of this will be too like, uh, you know, down the wire, 30 minute lengthy, everything like explained the full detail, but more like they are, uh, you know, just basic look at some of the concepts in the game and uh, how I understand them myself and uh, then people can tell me how they understand them themselves. But uh, today we have a video on uh, how to get back in after losing control. So this is typically something that happens after you uh, are wiped. For example in Splat or so the modes too, you get wiped. Typically what happens, you lose mid control, like this whole mid becomes your enemy color, which is not typically what you want in this game. And the enemy starts like uh, preparing for you to come from your spawn to kill you again and so on. So how in that situation are you gonna be able to overcome them and uh, take back the mid control? And uh, I have actually six steps on what you should do. And uh, starting with the first one, just uh, being aware of what the enemy's reach is. So think about this: that someone is dropping from the spawn, and there's a sniper here. Like this is a very typical sniper spot in the Inkblot Dart Academy. So you can see like what my reach is. So for example, if someone like goes goes there, they're just gonna get killed instantly. So you you, you just uh, can be too careless when. Uh, you have a sniper watching here, top mid. Or even that area, like you might you might not realize what sniper can reach here and whatever. And so you have to be really careful when you approach this map when a sniper is holding top mid. This is a very strong position for sniper, and this is just one example. It could be something else, it could be a longer range shooter, or it could be basically anything. It's just the idea is that you have to know know how to move it based on a what enemies that what weapons the enemy is running. So if it's longer range then you have little less options. If it's shorter range then well typically you have a more more free movement. So you can like even like go here and try to this bad but if you do the same thing with the sniper top mid it's not gonna work out the same way. And uh it's gonna change weapons, switch point of use so the second one is if your blood is inked, make it your color first. So just to demonstrate what this means, I had the perfect weapon in mind for this. Splash Matic recently buffed, yet rarely seen. Uh, so against a good team, they don't only ink mid, they also push to your blood and like attempt to ink it. Like basically this is your blood and okay it's a bit different design in its ma it's a uh, map of the game but typically this is your blood and this is like a uh, where you will primarily stand when you attempt to take back mid control so of course if this is not your ink it's not really what you want so some people i see like especially at lower levels they don't really like you know pay too much attention to this and they kind of panic and even if it's not their color they just a swim down here and okay if, he if this is not your color here this is the first mistake there's like someone like hiding here like uh, I go for them myself so many kills like this because they just don't you know take enough time when they come to spawn and it's like a really easy kill but instead if you are like if you are like uh, on the upper platform and you take your time and you ink the whole blood and maybe use a sub weapon if necessary you can force them out of hiding force them drop back to mid or even die if they don't like uh, uh, you know, if they don't move, which is what you want. So you can take this this, this part here, and uh, basically what's gonna happen is you charge your specials while using subs to pressure enemies. So you could think of the sniper holding the top mid on this map. So if I throw a mister, it's not like they're gonna stay there, they have to drop down. So this opens your whole team more movement options. So you no longer have to take risks when you stay like here, for example, and maybe you can rush the sniper down at the po at the possible 
time when you see the right ch chance come. But yeah, this is like just one really clear example where I want to bring Splash out. Because you can like shut down the top mid like this, and of course, you like already can ink a bit on the mid on your side, just special in this instance, ink chat. But okay, what also happens pretty commonly is that people don't really wait for the teammates to respawn. Yo, I was the first one to come down, so I'm gonna take revenge. Punch of a bum. Yeah, you, you sink chat, you get sniped in approximately one nanosecond. And uh, yeah, that's not typically what you want, because what, what's gonna happen now is that, yeah, you return to spawn. It's gonna, you have to wait whole eight seconds for you to respawn here, like. That's a long time, especially flat, flat zones, that's a bit too long time. So, basically, uh, I, I believe the term I call in some games is staggering, which would mean that... Uh, okay. You want your whole team when you attempt to push in. And if you die, then it's just three members, not four members, right? And you want the four members, because it's already gonna be a challenge for you to move in to a position rather than uh, you know for them to hold a position like it's pretty common common from uh, anywhere basically or the games even real life is that you, you need to in order to hold an area you need less men than you need to like uh, to get an area or like players for instance and uh, how it is solved in Splatoon is that you charge specials and so on and then you get the advance that way, and you also have the high ground to move from. But this doesn't work out if someone's playing solo and, you know, dying early. And typically what also happens after that, they go go and ride, oh my god, my team was so stupid, like they, they vibed right after. But you know, it's gonna be like a hard situation for a team if they're not all up, and you are the one uh, rushing in like that. So... Also, other thing is coordinating special. So again, like good example is Ink Chat. Ink Chat is, in this meta is maybe not the strongest, but it still has some use left. And if you manage to coordinate Ink Chat with uh, Ink Armor, that's like suddenly a really good combo. You, you, you lasted that one extra hit on in there, and that's actually pretty good even now. But it's, it doesn't have to be Ink Armor. It can be anything like. Basically every special in this game forces people to move, which makes it easier for you to pick them off. Then think about this, if, if I'm here again hiding in the mid, this is very reasonable that this is very good place for me to hide, I can like pop here and kill this guy. But if you ink chat and I have to move, I just, you know, do this basically. And you die. But if they used missiles or if they use stingray, typically while I'm doing this I'm frantically like running around and then when you ink chat, you can kill me really easily. And that's how you get back, back mid, really. And uh, just to restart the recon, to quickly go over what's gonna happen what, when it, once you get the wipe. So, also very important thing, how to play a wipe. Like, how, how, what do you happens when you get a wipe? It, and this applies to all modes, like every mode in the game. Is that, okay, I get a wipe. It has to be really fast what happens, like, Probably some guy, typically the one who holds more like support weapon is gonna ink the whole mid, like the whole mid, everything into it. And on the sides as well, like everything basically on the mid has to be your color, that's the first step. But your slayers at the same time should be like pushing their blood already, like pushing forward. Because this is how you prevent them from getting the specials, if you remember what we just went over. And you want them to prevent getting specials and the only way to really do it is to, you know, kill them. So typically what you want is your slayers moving ahead. So this is another thing I see like lower level players do, is that they stay back too much. And uh, of course, yeah, yeah, this is probably the most comfortable situation in that it's really hard to kill you until they get specials and you get absolutely destroyed. So in order to prevent that from happening, if you have slayers, they move ahead, maybe get in control here. You can like attempt to kill them before they can use their specials, and this is really strong. L like I explained about the staggering, they typically have to wait for them to respawn, so get extra of like eight seconds time or so. And uh, yeah, double control raymaker, same thing. You have to move, push forward, and it has to be fast after wipe because this is like the best chance for you to move in. You know, there's not not gonna be anyone here, so you can ink, get special maybe, like. Uh, 
try to control where they go with the specials. And uh, yeah, that's how you get back in after a wipe. And this is also how you. What you do after a wipe. So. Okay, so this was a new video. So please tell me your feedback. What I could do better. Or like what kind of uh, concepts you like me to cover. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, leave me a comment. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow.